This is my 2005 Polaris XCSP 600. And uh, I'm getting started at uh, replacing the lower sprocket bolt in the chain case. Um, took the pipe off. I did remove the, uh, the drain plug. There's a drain plug. It's a uh, 3 16 inch Allen head and, it, and it's down underneath. You come in from the bottom. Alright, I got the cover off. This is the bolt I want to replace. It's considered to be a little small. I think it's a 5 16 inch and a lot of people have this bolt either come loose or the head break off from being over torqued and uh, then things really come apart in there so I'm just going to go ahead and pull the uh, drive shaft out and replace that bolt with a bigger one. The thing I'm not sure of is how to get the, uh, the actual shaft out but I see that on that bearing there's a snap ring and here's the other side that's where the, the uh, speedometer cable hooks up I'm going to take those three bolts out, nuts off rather, and uh, remove that fitting and see if there's a snap ring there. Alright, got that cover off. Uh, I think I'm going to loosen the track up a little bit. Let's pull this back out of here. I just think that might make it easier to work on, so I'm just going to loosen up these adjusters here. Alright, got the track loose. And I decided to take the secondary clutch off just to make it easier to get at things here. There's the bearing. Um, there's a backing plate that goes in behind the, uh, the little gear drive for the speedometer. I took, so you take, that, you take that plate off for the, the gear drive off and then remove the backing plate and that appears to hold this bearing in place. And there's no snap ring. So I'm just going to have to goof around with this just a little bit and get this bearing slid off that shaft and then I'll figure out if I need to take the uh, the skid out or if I can just leave the skid in the snowmobile. I, I expect I'm going to have to remove it. But Alright, I got the skid out. Alright, let's bring this over here. Let's take a quick look. The uh, issues that I had, minor issues, um, this inner shaft on the front two bolts, that inner shaft will turn. Once you get the first bolt out, it unlocks that shaft and it allows it to turn so the other bolt won't come out on the other side. So, you know, you get one broke free, then you tighten it back up and then you, which locks the shaft down, then you go to the other side and get it broke free, take it out and come back to the other side. And now that's how you get them out. You can see how the front of this bolt is tapered. That to me tells me it's going to be a pain in the butt to get this skid back in when I see bolts that look like that. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, the other thing, real quick, is that the back bolts, when you go to take those out, you need a very thin wrench to get in there onto that nut that's back in there. I don't know if you can see it, but, but it's uh, very thin. And getting onto it, with a regular wrench is a pain. I mean, you can't do it. So I took a piece of flat stock, and I guess it's a quarter inch thick, or almost a quarter inch, and I cut a, a block out of it, and I slid it in there to hold it, to be my wrench. There you go, that's my wrench. And that was after failing a couple times. Um, you can see that how that's splayed out. So I had to take and get in here and where I could get a little more meat with my bar stock and that works pretty well. So that's all I got to say about all that. I got that skid out about five minutes ago. It took me all of 30 seconds to get the shaft out once the skid was out of the way. Slid right out on the uh, um, chain case side and this side was, I, I pulled it towards the uh, speedometer drive side. I pulled it in that direction back into that hole and it allowed the shaft to come right out on the chain case side. So the bearing is still in there and there's no bearing on the speedometer drive side. The bearing is still on the uh, on the shaft. So I'll be able to check those bearings out now. 
and see what I want to do with those, but I'll probably, I don't know, I'll probably replace them, I guess. And that's it. I'll take it and have that thing uh, drilled and tapped and uh, get it beefed up so I can have peace of mind when I'm riding. All right, I, uh, we're on day two here. I had to go get a pair of snap ring pliers today to get the snap ring out that held that bearing in place down there. And I was able to uh, gently tunk it out from behind once the snap ring was removed. There's a seal also back there I had to pull out, but I'm gonna replace uh, that bearing and the seal. And I'm also going to replace the bearing on the far side of the shaft here. I used a, uh, a puller to get the old bearing off and this is the new one here. Uh, I guess it was about forty dollars for that bearing. Uh, the bearing that goes in here I think was around sixteen. I decided to replace them since I was here. I figured I might as well do it. Um, and the bearing that I'm going to put in this side uh, I've got it in the freezer right now. I'm hoping that that'll uh, shrink it just a little bit and help e ease the installation on that. And I'll use the old bearing as a driver to uh, gently get it in place. All right, got that new bearing in there. I ground the old bearing down around the outside of it so that it wouldn't get stuck. So well, that's trash, we'll throw that away. I got the snap ring in. When it's ready to go in, it goes in easy. But uh, not until it's ready. And uh, I don't know. I'd say you gotta have a set of these if you're gonna do it. Don't try to do it with, without them. I picked these up at Napa this morning. All right. I've been working on putting the skid back in. I got the uh, the, the drive shaft all back in place, and the 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 plates are back on on the. Uh, speedometer drive side snap rings back in place on the, the chain case side I wrestled the um, the undercarriage in place and I made a discovery in, in the process of trying to line up to get the bolts back in um, very hard to get the skid slid back far enough to get the forward bolts in so I realized that if I unhooked these springs right here, what they do is they rest over the top of that wheel. I lifted them up, lifted them up, pulled them out, and let them release, which dropped this top set of bogey wheels down, and uh, you know made the skid take up a lot less length of the track. And I've, I've been able to move the skid around now and get the bolts in. This is take four. Alright, I've been adjusting the tension and centering of the track and uh, I've got a little bit less than an inch of sag on my track here. And I've heard people say that with a 10 pound weight hanging from it you want about an inch to an inch and a half. I've heard other people say an inch to an inch and a half with no weight. So I went with an inch, no weight. I think it's fairly loose myself and, and that's good with me because loose is fast and if it ratchets I'll just snug it up a little bit tighter if it ratchets in the front. Now as far as the adjustment goes, here's the adjuster. You want to loosen this bolt up so that the rear axle can move forward and aft. And then uh, whichever bolt you tighten will cause the track to move away from the bolt you tighten. And to check the, the centering, I just compared the inside edge of the bogey wheel against these lugs. And you just have to goof around with a little bit, um, you know, just pulling the track through and seeing how it's centered. Uh, once you think you've got it, snug the bolt up because that changed everything when I snug that bolt. So I had to go back and uh, loosen the bolt again and, and retweak just a little to be sure that I was evenly spaced on these lugs to the bogey wheel on both sides. All right, I just put a straight edge on the gears here in the chain case. And I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of clearance on that lower gear, so I might shim it up to uh, push it out just a little bit. I measured it with some feeler gauges, that, that space, and it's about 20 thousandths. 
and I think that's uh, probably worrying about things I shouldn't, don't need to worry about. But if I can get a shim, I'll put it in there. Well, I got that bolt replaced, and uh, now I've got peace of mind that I didn't have before. I can ride it without having to worry. The uh, probably um, the biggest pain was just getting the undercarriage back in. Once I figured out to unhook the springs, like I show you in the video, um, everything went pretty good. wasn't that bad of a project. And of course, I had. Uh, I had a machine shop do the uh, the boring and or the tap drilling and tapping. That's all I got for you. Hope the video helps you. Bye-bye.